The Saints are at the Chiefs tonight for Monday Night Football. We're going to go over some props. We're going to go over some parlays. I'm going to build the same game parlay for everybody. Then we're going to give out a special on how you can get a 5% play along with Monday Night Football Best Bet for a discount. Welcome, everyone. I am Andy. Let's get started here. So uh, we're going to start with the passing props. And while we're doing this, if you guys could do me a favor, just hit the like button. It really helps the algorithm out. It's a little token of your appreciation. And uh, for the word of the day, if you don't have a hot take for the comment section, just type the word pen. Do a little Ralph Michaels special here. Pen. That's the word of the day. Just type that in the comment section. Helps the algorithm out. Helps your boy out. Let's wager talk. No, I'm a good jo- doing a good job for you guys. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, passing props here. And we'll start with the passing yards. Derek Carr at 211.5. Patrick Mahomes at 234.5. Obviously, no Rasheed Rice um, for Patrick Mahomes. So you got to wonder... What's his passing numbers going to look like? And, you know, those of you that have Patrick Mahomes in fantasy football know he's not been that good as far as stats. Um, So we'd look at this 234 and a half and his yards this year, 291 in the first first week, but 151 after that, 217 after that. Now, he did have 245 yards last week against the Chargers. That was helped by a big play, 54 yards um, to Xavier Worthy. But uh, this, this 234, I, it, it it actually feels about right. Like, like when you're thinking Patrick Mahomes, you think, oh, you know, high-flying offense. It's just not really been the case um, recently. So I'm, I'm staying away. I think that number is pretty dialed in there. Uh, Derek Carr is at 211.5. Again, here on the surface – Feels a little low, but then you look at Derek Carr's number, and he's only had over 200 yards twice out of four games. He was at 239 against Atlanta, only 142 against Philly, 243 against Dallas, and 200 against Carolina. Now, you can ex- you can explain the Carolina game because they got up so big they ended up not having to throw the ball. I, I'm a big believer in this Chiefs defense. So I'm, I'm a little hesitant to take m- many overs on Chiefs opponents uh, these days. But 211.5 does feel just a little bit low. The, the the Chiefs are favorites here. The Saints have lost two in a row, haven't looked great doing so. you, so you got to wonder if there's going to be a little bit of catch-up time here, maybe towards the end, a little bit of hurry-up. Um, our best bet yesterday was Joe Flacco over... 241 and a half passing and it was getting kind of close and then you get the hurry up towards the end I think he had a, at over 100 yards in the last like five minutes of the game so you get these teams that need to get a big need to get some quick scores towards the end of the game it's amazing how many yards they can eat up so um, when I'm looking at Derek Carr I, I'm, I'm leaning over the 211 if I have to pick a, a, a passing total here now that being said Justin Herbert only had 179 Last week, this this Chiefs defense is no joke. So I can't say it's the strongest play that I have, but uh, if I'm taking passing yards, it's going to be Derek Carr over two eleven. Uh, passing touchdowns here, uh, both of them are priced at one and a half. Man, this over one and a half on Derek Carr, just because it's plus two oh five, just seems wow. Man, that's a that's a big time price. I'm I'm probably not going to get to the window on it, but certainly not playing the under at minus two seventy five. No opinion on Mahomes. Uh, he's he's gone over and under twice, so uh, passing touchdowns. I will um, I will tell you guys this. I've experimented with this the the last couple weeks, and I haven't submitted it as a client play, but I think I'm going to start doing it. So yesterday or this week, I just took four quarterbacks that I thought had good matchups to throw one touchdown. Parlayed them together, got it about minus 150. It was Baker Mayfield, it was Jordan Love, uh, it was C.J. Stroud, and uh, the other quarterback, oh, Brock Purdy. Um, These are guys that just consistently throw at least one touchdown. Um, They're on offenses that put up good points, and they had good matchups. It was a fairly easy cash. I believe everyone had a touchdown by the third quarter. So I'm going to keep experimenting with that, just looking at three or four quarterbacks to throw one touchdown. Um, it's worked the last couple weeks. Like I said, no official client plays yet, but I'm going to uh, keep looking at that one. So uh, let's take a look at the rushing props here. Alan Kamara at 66 and a half. So when I'm looking at these, uh, the the defense of of the Chiefs, they're, they're really good. Um, I'm pulling up the numbers here. I believe they're what? They're, they're top 10 in terms of... Uh, 
uh, yards per carry. They just don't give up. They don't give up a ton of carries. They're seventh in, in yards per game, just under 100 yards at 99. So I, I would lean Kamara under 66 and a half. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is 18 and a half. I would stay away from that one. He's kind of dancing around that number. I am interested in the rush attempts for, uh, Kareem Hunt at 11 and a half. He had 14 last week. That was his first game with the chiefs. Uh, I thought he looked the best. Um, I'm not Carson Steele appears to have lost that job. You know, you can't fumble too much and keep your job, especially when you're as slow as he is. So I think Kareem Hunt probably gets the lion's share. And again, if we're up, the Chiefs are up towards the end of the game. It's going to be mean a few more carries for Kareem Hunt. So 11 and a half really, really grabbed my attention here. Again, the four and a half rush attempts for Patrick Mahomes. If they're up and there's kneel downs, those count as rush attempts. So it's one of those where if they're up and he kneels a few times at the end, he could sail over the rush attempts if he uh, scrambles a few times uh, during the game. Uh, no opinion on the rushing and receiving yards, but I'm much more interested in Kamara over 103.5 total uh, than I am just his rushing yards. When you look at um, uh, Kamara, you know, 77 yards last week against uh, the Falcons, 87 before that. 115 against Dallas and 83 against Carolina. Part of the reason why I'm kind of leaning more towards the under is he's sailed over this four games in a row. Kind of due for a little bit of a regression here. He's not going to he's not going to run the table on overs on rushing totals. But you look at his uh, receiving totals, which we'll get to in a bit. 42, 40, 65, and 27. So he's he's doing a lot of damage in the passing game. So if you're looking at Kamara, I I, I might lean rushing over. Uh, rushing and receiving over, or maybe just look at receiving. Um, the other interesting one that I thought garners a little attention, the Xavier Worthy uh, two and a half. You know, we've seen these, we've seen these uh, receivers. Uh, CD Lamb was one of them. Debo Samuel is another one uh, where you're, you're, you're just banking on them getting a carry. And, it's it's really high risk high reward because if if Worthy does get one carry and they trick the defense, he's just gonna fly over this one. It's gonna be a, a good one. But um, you know he didn't have any carries last week, which was interesting because without Rice, no carries, no yards. The three games before that, twenty one five and thirteen. So I wonder if there's a game plan change where they're going. You know what we. We don't have rice, so we need Worthy to be running or to be running routes, not uh, taking end around. So I would stay away from Worthy. I think that I think a lot of people may look at that and go, "Oh man, yeah, absolutely, Worthy on the end around, he's going to go over. He could, but uh, him not having any carries last week was a little bit uh, worrisome." So uh, Derek Carr, no opinion. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, no opinion on the uh, uh, rushing props. All right, let's take a look at receiving props. Man, there's a ton of them. Let's go to uh, receiving yards. I think Travis Kelsey is going to be the squarest play on the board. Uh, he had a big game last week without Rice, seven catches, uh, what was it, 80-plus yards, and so they have him at 58-and-a-half. I think everyone's going to be jumping on that one, and I always just get terrified uh, when I see a prop that everyone is going to jump on. On Look no further than yesterday with the teasers. Uh, the Giants and 49ers just killed everybody. Um, I'm sorry, the Seahawks and the 49ers killed everybody on those. Um, so... I'm going to stay away from Travis Kelsey just because you guys don't need me to tell you that Travis Kelsey is good. Um, I'm looking more here at Justin Watson and Noah Gray. I'm debating whether to try and pick one of them or just play both of them. But when I look at what happened in last week's game when Rice goes out, you've got Kelsey with the big game, 7 for 89. Worthy goes only three catches for 73 yards because he had the 54-yarder. Noah Gray... Four catches on four targets for 40 yards. And he's only 21 and a half. Um, let's say he only catches, you know, three of the four targets. He's averaging 10 yards per catch. He gets over that. Um, so without Rice in there, there's a lot of targets. Um, so I'm looking at Noah Gray, 21 and a half, and Justin Watson, 25 and a half. Justin Watson had two catches for 27 yards. So he went over. Um, I... I'm, I, I would stay away from the bigger name guys on the Chiefs if they even have any bigger name guys left. Kelsey's the only big name guy. I'm leaning Noah Gray. 
Um, if 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 you want to play both, I, I I could see where you could get to the window on both of these and just say, at worst, I'm going one and one, getting juiced. Maybe we get lucky and uh, we we cash both of them. But if I'm just picking one, I think it's Noah Gray at 21 and a half. I just love the four targets and the four catches. Um, that has to put a lot of confidence in Mahomes. So that would be how I would go at it with the Chiefs. Uh, we mentioned Kamara, 31 and a half. That one, that one does really, really stand out. Uh, the only game he didn't go over this was Carolina. And again, you know, not being used with, with the blowout. But in the, the game since then, 65 against Dallas, 40 against Philly and uh, 42 against Atlanta. So certainly Kamara could be used. And man, what's what's great about Kamara is at the end of the half, I've, I've seen him have four or five catches at the end of the first half on those uh, quick drives from Carr. King check down Derek Carr. So um, we can look at receptions. Kamara's four and a half. Uh, that feels about right. Um, Alave had eight catches last week. I know it's four and a half at minus 150, but it looks like he's finally getting the targets. Um, as far as the other, uh, there was one other one. Oh, Samaj P. Ryan. Uh, I don't know where they're getting this two and a half. I know it's juice minus 175. He didn't have any catches. Like, he didn't have any targets last week. And, and, and the, the game before that, I don't think he had any. So, like, two and a half, it's minus 175. I don't know. I think there's probably some. I think there's worse plays in the world at minus one seventy five uh, than Samaj P Ryan because I, I, he's the. I know he's supposed to be the pass catching back, but really has a double. How many how many catches does he have total? Okay, so he had three against Atlanta, one against Cincy, one against uh, Baltimore, and none last week. I'm I'm not not playing some much P Ryan over, uh, if anything, it's under again, the price kind of probably scares us out of there. So we're probably not playing it, but I thought that was uh, interesting. And then worthy at three and a half, you know, he's, is he ready to take the, the next step and, um, you know, get, get a lot more catches. I, I would, I would lean. Yeah, probably, you know, he, he's had three, he had three targets in the first game and then, Four targets in the next three games, but they've had a full week to work with, uh, to work with him and get him kind of used to being the number one, or I guess the one B, if if you consider Kelsey. But if the Chiefs are gonna take the, if the Chiefs are gonna fill the shoes of Rice, this guy has to become a little bit more involved. You can't just be give, giving him four targets. So I know he's known for the big plays. Wouldn't surprise me if maybe a, a couple bubble screens just to try and get him out in space. So I kind of lean a little bit. Um, to the over three and a half at minus one ten. This would be his first over, uh, over three and a half for the season. So again, kind of regression up a little bit, a lot of opportunities. So might lean the over, but um, probably not making it to the window here. So um, before we build a same game parlay, I want to let you guys know what we have up at a wager talk. We do have our Monday night football top play. We only had one play yesterday. I mentioned it earlier. It was Joe Flacco. Over 241 and a half, fairly no sweat. Uh, we get there in the fourth quarter, but uh, very, very low volume on on football. We only used a couple parlay pieces and then that play. So um, one play jumped out off the page to us. So we're going to play that. And we have our UFC 5% best bet. That is up. We're 4-1 and one in our last five 5% UFC plays. We're coming off another winning week in MMA. 21-10 and 10 in our last uh, 31 plays. That's over a three-month period. So... UFC MMA has been very, very good to us this year, and we're looking to continue our winning ways there. So I mentioned earlier, if you want to take advantage of the Monday night football play and get that 5% play, we are running the seven days of winning for $77. Still, this ends uh, Tuesday. So we're recording this on Monday, obviously Monday night football. If you want to get seven days for $77, it's going to include the play tonight. It's going to include the 5% UFC play, and you're going to get all plays uh, that we have throughout the week. We are up 136 units in 2024. So um, we're uh, 100 units was our goal. Now we're 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 dialing in on 150 units. So we're coming off of an 11 unit win last week. So we're feeling really good about our plays this week. So I would encourage everyone um, if you're thinking about getting the play tonight, you might as well just get seven days for seventy-seven dollars. And the nice thing about this. We will have days that we don't have plays, 
those days get added on to your seven days. So like Tuesday, if we don't have any plays, that day gets added on to your the, the end of your seven days. So you get seven days of plays. Um, we'll also have our college football best bet, college football five and one this year and 18 and five lifetime. We only do one college football play per week. We started this last year. It has been a smash hit. 18 and five since we started this five and one this year. So all those included seven days for $77. So $11 a day, absolute smoking deal. You get the Monday night football play and you get the 5% play. All right. Uh, I mentioned building a same game parlay. Oh, uh, before I do that, I, I, I have to give a shout out to, uh, on our, on the winning in the shadows, discord channel, uh, snow bets. I have to give him, uh, some credit here because he has discovered this. <laughs> he's discovered this play. Um, where is it? It's 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 a to kick two field goals in the first half. It's just been fantastic. Uh, it's he, he keeps hitting it, and I have yet to I have yet to play it. Um, but it's been hitting. Uh, I'm struggling to to fight it here. But uh, just fight it in your prop section. Over one and a half field goals in the first half. Uh, this, this play has just been really really consistent. Um, here it is. Field goals made. There we go. Field goal totals. First half, it's minus 160, so a little bit of juice. Um, but you got Harrison Butker, who's good from just about anywhere on the field. Um, he, he played it a couple times yesterday, and they just keep hitting. So total field goals first half over one and a half has just been a really, really consistent winner. If you're not comfortable with the juice on minus 160, I understand completely, but uh, file that away. Uh, shout out to Snow Bets. <laughs> uh, I'd mentioned let's build a same game parlay. So I'm on DraftKings clearly. Here's my premise for starting uh, the same game parlay. I am big time believer in the Chiefs defense and they are winning games with their defense last year and this year. Slowing down the game, not a high flying, uh, high flying offense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the team totals. I think this is a fairly low scoring game and I'm just going to start with taking the under on both teams and their their highest alt team total. So I'm going to take the Chiefs under 33.5, and, and I'm going to take the Saints under 29.5. Uh, just for context, uh, the Chiefs have not scored over this total this year. The Chiefs, uh, and they've kind of gone down each week. So uh, they've scored 27, 26, 22, and 17. So you can see they're not scoring a ton of points. Uh, let's take a look at... The New Orleans Saints, they obviously had the big, big first two weeks. Uh, but now they've really slowed down against Atlanta and against Philly. So they hang 47 against the Panthers and 44 against the Cowboys. Last couple weeks, 12 against the Eagles and 24 against the Falcons. So I'm going to start my same game parlay with this at minus 380. And then I mentioned earlier about uh, players to throw a touchdown. I'm going to add Mahomes to throw a touchdown this season and last season combined. He's only had one game where he has not thrown a touchdown. That was that bizarre game against Denver last year. So I think Mahomes, even without Rice, is good for a touchdown. So that gets us to minus 200. And then I'm just going to throw in the Chiefs on the money line. I am not a believer in the Saints team. I thought they were a little bit fraudulent to start the season. And I think they've been exposed a little bit the last couple of weeks. And... Uh, losing 15, 12, to the Eagles, not a good look. And then 26, 24 at the Falcons, uh, they're, they're having to play at Arrowhead. This sets up well for a chiefs team that I think people might be, people might be going, Oh, Rasheed Rice, like, you know, wonder how they're going to be. But the fact is they're minus five and a half point favorites and the defense outside of Mahomes is the best part of this team. So this gets us to even money. We'll take the chiefs under 33 and a half, the saints, under 29 and a half on their team totals. Mahomes will throw a touchdown on the Chiefs money line. That gets us to even money. The other thing that I will mention about the Chiefs is their second half unders. Not their team total, but just the full game second half under. Uh, this team was 17 and 2 to the second half under last year. Um, their last two games, they've gone under in the second half. The premise is this Chiefs defense just knows how to stop teams on third down. And now you've got one of their best weapons, the Chiefs out. So now they're kind of grinding out the clock, longer sustained drives. 
not as much big play explosive uh, uh, explosive plays without Rice. So I'm expecting running, kind of controlling the clock a little bit more. Field goals galore probably in the second half, and it sets up for a nice second half under. So this is one of those plays that I think I'm probably going to play it maybe one unit, two units, just Chiefs second half under for the rest of the season. It's on an absolutely insane run. I mean, what is it, uh, 21 and 4 um, last season and this season um, combined? Uh, don't, don't hold me to those numbers, but it hits at a, at a pretty big rate. So I think if you play it every game from now to the end of the season, you're probably going to co- come up ahead. Again, maybe one to two units, one and a half units. Um, so, all right, that is going to do it for us. Uh, if you guys have any comments, leave them in the comment section. Let me know what your best bet is. If you don't have any any hot takes, just type the word pen. I love reading your guys' comments and responding to all of them. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Get notifications for all our individual game breakdowns on NFL games, college football games. Don't forget, we still got MLB playoffs and uh, we'll have individual game breakdowns on those. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to use that uh, 7 for $77 for the next seven days. Get you the 5% UFC play. Monday Night Football, college football best bet of the week. And uh, let's continue our winning ways. Good luck in your place, and we'll see everyone later.